Okay, so this is kind of going to be the, the final video, the, kind of the general overview of this NAND to Tetris 16-bit computer. I'm just going to kind of talk about some of the design considerations, some problems that I ran into, some things that um, I was kind of working through on this project. So we have here, this is the clock. And this clock is essentially just a 555 timer that's running through a couple of AND and OR gates in order to um, create this switch this flip-flopping kind of clock. And basically how I want it, wanted it is you have one, you have one pulse that um, sets the command and then you have another pulse that latches the rest. So it's kind of a two-phase um, clock. So that's the one that's running this whole entire thing. Right over here, this is the EEPROM. So right now this is the AT28C64B. Um, Both, they're, they're two, um, 8-bit parallel EEPROMs, and I just wired them together to create basically a 16-bit one. These, they run over here, and this is the, um, this is, this is where the instructions get decoded. So the, the decoding logic is this, this breadboard right over here. And, um, after that, these, this, all the, the, the control bits from this board, they control the rest of, um, the, the rest, the rest of the computer. So the control bits from here will control the ALU and the output and where that output wants to go. Um, and right over here, these LEDs, this is the this is the A register, and over here this is a D register. And these are the two main registers that are going to be fed into um, or in, in in the CPU. Uh, right over here, this is the program counter, and this program counter is fed back into this uh, EEPROM. So whatever this program counter says, that's the address of the EEPROM. Uh, this, these LEDs indicate what address it is. Um, what else? The, for the, the rest of this, um, the rest of this, up to, about, up to about this part, the rest of this computer is the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit. So you have different phases. You have the zero, you have the negative, you have um, negate output, and you have basically an X and the Y input. You have two inputs, and they go into, they go through a number of different logic stages, and then those logic stages get fed to the output right over here. And now this output can it can get piped to this other control stage. This control stage is either fed to the RAM, the memory, or it can be fed back to this this long black wire here. It can be fed back to something like the another register there <coughs> to store that data. And these two long wires here, this is the memory so, and the address. So this one gives the address of the memory. This one is the actual data. So let's say you want to read a memory, read a value from memory. You would send it across this white wire, send it back into the arithmetic logic unit, and that gets fed the output here. Now one, um, and all this, all this is, is basically an exact... Um, uh, replic rep replica of the NAND to Tetris computer, except that you know, um, I, I wasn't able to fully implement a screen or a keyboard or input, but the, the general working principle is uh, exactly the same. Now, one thing that I did have a problem was with, with this RAM in particular, and, and actually this, these, this entire, the, the memory, the memory for this computer was that the NAND to Tetris, it has a separate, they have two separate buses for um, data input and output. So you have data that goes in on one bus, and then you have data that comes out on another bus. Well, with this one, that's not possible, because there was a chip shortage, and the, um, the, the, the correct chip was about $243. I was able to get this chip for about $2.43. Um, Funny, it's about 100 times cheaper. So with this, I had to get some of these breadboard relays, and what these relays do is you'll hear them click um, right there. And what the, the clicking does is it basically, it's like a physical multiplexer between input, the input and output bus on this, um, this EEPROM chip. Uh, so every time it writes to memory, it goes click like that. Uh, it's kind of funny, kind of, kind of humorous. The, the same problem is on this EEPROM. The this EEPROM has this exact same problem. Except that um, with this EEPROM, you don't really need to write it because it's it's static. Uh, so with that, it it only works as an output. 
Another one uh, problem that I ran into was the power delivery. So you notice here, uh, I, back, I actually mod <laughs> I made this um, kind of sketch power supply. Basically, I took an old um, an old ATX power supply. So these are the specs. So it has a 12 volt, 17.8 amp output, a 5 volt, 15 amp output, a 3.3 volt, 7 amp output, a, a negative 12 volt, 0.5 amp output, and a 5 volt, um, 4 amp output. And the 5 volt is uh, like the higher quality, more accurate one. So the one that I'm using is, I'm using this uh, 5 volt one, the main 5 volt, the one that's capable of um, about 7 amps. And that one, it seems to be doing all right. Honestly, I, I haven't done um, current measurements too much on this, but I did know that you know a USB power supply for something like this is not going to cut it because I'm like this thing. I, I think I estimated there's about five thousand connections, a couple hundred um, uh, TTL chips on this. Um, another one because the uh, this power delivery. The, there's voltage drops across the breadboard. So you use this breadboard and there's a voltage drop going from here all the way to let's say down here. The voltage will draw, that's just it's DC, it's the as law. Um, and so what I, I actually did was uh, here, I, I designed a custom uh, breadboard power supply. You can see it has kind of my, my channel name on there. Um, but. Basically, I basically made it so there's a very nice large solder pad, just plug into the breadboard, boom, 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 boom. And I scattered them all throughout wherever it was convenient. And it's, you know, that's basically solved most of my problems. Another one was, you know, obviously I had to put um, a bunch of decoupling capacitors all around near, near the power supply. And actually, this power supply designed, it does have a spot for an LED or a decoupling capacitor. Um, one thing that's nice about it is also USB-C. Uh, so this power supply is pretty good. Um, I, I use it for other electronics projects as well. Um, all this, I'll, I'll try to try to link it, everything that I'll refer to in a, on the GitHub in the video description. One other thing is, well, okay, so you, I mean, this whole computer is built, but what about this EEPROM, right? How do you get the information onto here? And that's where this thing, this uh, XGECUTL8662 Plus, that's where this thing comes in place. And this is, a, it's basically a uh, EEPROM programmer. And I use a program called MiniPro. You can just download it on Linux, it's a command line, pretty simple. You just do MiniPro, get your um, binary file, and you can flash your EEPROM. And so what I basically did was um, you can uh, just type out the type out the machine code, and I wrote a simple Python script that chops up those 16-bit machine codes into a most significant and a least significant byte, so so two 8-bit parts, and then it basically spits out two e two um, EEPROM files. Then you can flash that to this, and then you can have let's say EEPROM um, uh, MSB and LSB most significant and least significant, and then that creates, uh, you, that's how you can go from a, just a 16-bit address instruction to two separate 8-bit instructions. Um, another, I, I, I guess I would also want to address wiring management because this is obviously a, uh, a relatively large breadboard project. And honestly, you know, I'm not very proud of the wire management here. And a lot of this was kind of due to a uh, failure in, in planning. It's awful here um, because, but, you know, I, I, I feel like with some of these buses, I kind of got my act together. And one thing that I did find was that for these very long 16-bit buses going across, it was helpful to use zip ties um, to keep the structure in place. And, um, you know, it actually kind of looks cool because then I could color code it. I could get, um, I could get the the white and the black contrast, um, black and red. You know, you know, you know how um, a lot of times people like some bling. I guess that was the bling that I added to this. Uh, what are some other things? Well, for these LEDs, this is kind of the most display that I get. And um, 
you know, for the longest time, I, I didn't add um, these current limiting resistors, and that was I was running into so many problems. But once once those were added, everything was good. I guess you could say, um, hey, this 16-bit computer does have a solid-state drive right there. Um, so yeah, uh, there was a uh, oh one other thing is you know all the all of the all these all these wires you know they just basically act as a giant antenna. So like if I if I press on the wire if I press on these wires it's going to change the impedances all over the place. It's going to change all the electrical characteristics and signals in this circuit. And even though even though the clock is going at a pretty slow pace. So this white light is like the main official clock and this blue light um, this blue light basically leads this green one. And uh, those two are the um, address set and then register latch instru instructions respectively. Um, but yeah, going back to kind of this electrical characteristics, like if I were to press on this thing, everything would just go completely haywire because um, everything's kind of delicately in place right now. Uh, right now it's just running a very simple test program, it loads some things, calculates some things, stores in memory, then it goes back to zero, goes back to location zero and loops over again. Um, and, but yeah, I would, I would definitely say, look, this, uh, this breadboard project, I do not recommend doing, implementing anything close to this on a breadboard. I would, uh, you know, wire wrap would probably be much better. Just designing a PCB for this would be much better. But the reason why I wanted to um, create this on breadboards was it was more of a proof of concept. And I, I wanted it to be kind of a, um, I thought it would be kind of humorous almost if I could say, you know, I built a computer, you know, maybe not, maybe not one of these. I didn't build a computer like this, but I built a computer. <laughs> Um, so, uh, also, I didn't talk about this, but, and also, um, this is also, this, this part doubles as conditional jump logic. So, the conditional jump basically tells it, um, if, basically compares this output, or compares some values in this, um, in this processor, and it basically tells, well, do I want to jump to a particular point in the program? Do I want to jump to zero? Do I want to jump... Um, or do I want to jump to whatever value? Do I want to jump to address location, say address 20 or something, and then go from there? Do I want to branch out? Or stuff like that. And this conditional jump logic is very, very, very important because it basically allows your computer to circle back, to loop. So you don't just run a program from start to finish and it just stops. You can actually run a program that has it go back to the beginning, or you can have a program that'll go to back to a certain point in that program and then make decisions. So this conditional jump logic is kind of the, the icing on the cake for this because this entire time I've been <clears throat> feeding it just raw machine um, code from, from an old THC microcontroller. But this conditional jump logic in place with this EEPROM and the program counter right here feeding back into this EEPROM through this, this black wire that basically allows your computer to be self-sufficient, fully functioning, just complete standalone. Because now your computer can make decisions for itself based on its input. You know, obviously, you know, garbage in, garbage out. You want to feed it, you want to feed it good data and uh, good, good programs and good information. But nevertheless, um, the, the principle remains the same that once you have a way to compute, you have a way to store, you have a program, you have a way to jump around and you have a way to organize and um, tell the computer where you are. Um, it's just a matter of connecting those things. So a lot of times people will say, well, this is such a complicated project and you know, I could never do something like that. Well, look, me neither. Um, this is basically, you just take a very, you just take a lot of very, very basic, um, you know, computer logic design principles. It just starts out with just a NAND gate from a NAND gate, you can create, you know, flip flops. You can create all sorts of other logic gates. You can create memory. You can create um, counters, adders, all sorts of these things. And all you do is just connect them together. Um, 
And once, once you understand that through the Nandetentious program, or through any, any textbook for that matter, um, it all just, it'll all just click. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking to, to work on something like this, you know, I would highly encourage you to check out the Nandetetris program. I would highly encourage you to just, just do stuff, just read, uh, blow up things in, in, uh, in your garage, um, start experimenting, buy a couple of these rolls of chips here, got these from Mauser, and um, they're great. Just start um, working on them. I'll, I'm going to turn the light off real quick, and just you can kind of see um, this computer a little bit better. So you can see all of the. This is the clock. These are. This is the EEPROM location. That's. These are the register outputs, program counter, ALU out output, and this is the memory. And uh, it all. It all. It's almost a. Uh, it's almost a work of art. Almost, I will say, but. You know, honestly, there's not much I can really talk about any more about this because I, I you know, I've, I'm kind of moving on to other other projects at this point in time. But I just want to kind of uh, bring a tentative conclusion to this Nanda Tetris project, um, and you know, just kind of talk about a lot of the the design considerations, a lot of problems I had. And hopefully, just give y'all a, a word of encouragement out there because you, know, you can do it. All this, uh, this isn't, you know, if I can do it, any, anyone can do it because I'm not, I'm not a very, not a very <laughs> bright guy. Uh, well, at the end of the day, but it's just a, lo it's just a lot of very, uh, very simple building blocks. And once you just build upon those things, it'll all come together, and it just comes down to a matter of. You know, do you want to, do you want to sit down for, I think I, I think I spent, you want to sit down for at least a couple hundred hours and just um, strip some wires, look at some data sheets, you know, over here, uh, I, I, I print out, print out a bunch of these data sheets and just keep, and I just kept referring to so this one was a counter, shows the clock diagrams. This one was the multiplexers. Um, you know, TI, the documentation is fantastic. They have all the pinouts there. They have the logic diagrams. And um, really just, just uh, I would say, if you're, if you're approaching this, number one thing, if, if you want to make a project like this, number one thing is to have good tools. Have good tools. You know, I got a really nice automatic wire stripper. That was good. Um, good set of electrical tweezers. Um, good work light. I've had this work light for many, many years, and um, you know some good snacks as well. Get some water, um, and uh, also make sure that you compile the bill of materials and print out these data sheets and really just test test each component, um, rigorously test it before. So like I would run I would run a whole bunch of tests on each unit through like Teensy through other parts before putting it onto this and uh, when all was said, said and done uh, it was kind of transferred to this uh, this piece of wood here but um, yeah overall this is this is an anti Tetris uh, computer in all of its glory <laughs> right now um, I think uh, that's, that's all I really have to say about it I, uh, I hope this video was helpful. I hope I wasn't, you know, I probably knew it was rambling too much, but, um, you know, I, I just wanted to share this with y'all and hopefully, hopefully give, give people an encouragement that, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's quite a project, but it's very, it's very doable. It's very doable. Um, so with that, uh, I think the, the video, the, I'll, I'm going to end the video here, um, but just uh, reach out to me if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer. Um, maybe leave a comment or something like that. So 